Oh, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your DFib testing experience utilizing Flute by Medical OneQA workflow automation software. OneQA comes with over 63 pre-built work order procedures, but we recommend that you please review those procedures before you adopt them. Make sure it meets all your hospital's policies and procedures as well as meets the most recent version of the OEM equipment's uh, service manual. Let's get cracked into work order and we'll show you how to get the most out of your testing experience with reliability and repeatability as well as easy, accurate ways to record your data. Please note what we're about to show you is not a standard preventive maintenance procedure. This is something we made up for demonstration purposes only. Getting into the work order here, we have two different preventive maintenance procedures we can select. We will select this one for right now. And here's all the information we need to know as well as the work order ID. Moving on, we're going to be doing a preventive maintenance style work order and the device we're going to be testing, as well as all the information from the analyzers that are connected to the OneQA software at this point. In these sections, you can start to customize special notes. Maybe everything that you're going to do for your preventive maintenance procedure or any special equipment that you need to bring along with you, as well as access codes. All that can be recorded right here into OneQA. Moving down to a physical inspection of the unit, this is actually one of the steps. So we'd simply read the instructions and it's like either pass for this one and maybe for this one we'll read this instruction and pass for here and then in this case what if it fails so here you have a green light go green light go here red stop there's an issue so now we can either go back and correct the issue and make this a pass or we can leave it as fail and complete the work under conditions moving on to the next step here's what we're going to need to do the electrical safety test Instead of having to read a diagram though, we can actually insert a picture of how to do the connections. So here it is, my 1 to 10 adapter block, my hands-free adapter, so I've connected my entire defibrillator at one time to the safety analyzer. Here's the test we're going to perform, as well as any special instructions. And now here's a diagram that corresponds to the picture we just showed you, so we can double check our work. And now getting into the test, I simply push play. Follow the instructions, turn my defibrillator on, hit continue. All right, now I'd like to power my defibrillator off, hit continue. And you'll notice that my electrical safety results have automatically been recorded. I didn't have to remember how to set up or operate my safety analyzer. I didn't even have to bring in any of the data, it did it for me automatically. Everything was already done for me there. So moving on to the next tests, here are some operational tests. And what we did here is I actually cut and pasted right out of the service manual into one QA. So I had the exact diagrams and button pushes to get to the keypad test that would look like this. Simply follow the instructions and I would hit pass when I'm done with it. Or if there's an issue, fail obviously. Moving on to a shock test, we can show you how to use the defibrillator, the uh, Impulse 7000, here's a picture of how to connect it. In the case of the Zill X series manual, we need to use the additional 7010 load box and use different uh, loads to discharge our defib at. So we'll follow the instructions right there. It shows at 25 ohms. Everything else is connected correct. Oh, here we go. Move my cables down. There we go. So that's here. These are here. And... These are here, good to go. Now, we we'll simply turn on our defibrillator, follow the instructions, go to here, we're at 25 ohms, select 50 joules on my defibrillator. Charge. Discharge. There's my results, 50 ohms. Charge. Discharge, and one last time at 175 ohms. Charge. Discharge. Go to shut my defib off, and select done. It's that easy. It makes sure that you complete all your steps, that all your data is accurate, and that nothing was missed. This way, it just makes the whole job and the whole experience of testing defibrillators so much easier. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.